Hello, a storage admin I'm going to monitor today the new data warehouse application I just migrated a few days ago into the Extreme IO All Flash Storage Array. First, I will log in to the web UI using my administrator credentials. As I log in, I see the dashboard. Here I can see exactly what's going on. It has three tabs, Health, Performance and Capacity. The Performance tab shows the current IOPS latency and bandwidth, also the overall performance in the past one hour. Here at the bottom, we can see the top performance volumes and initiator groups. These are the most busiest volumes in the system in terms of IOPS latency and bandwidth. I can see that the data warehouse volume is in the list. So let's drill down to these volumes to get additional information about their workloads. As I drill down, these volumes are added to the context selector. Also, the system flagged all screens that have additional information about these volumes. And now I'm click away from each report using these objects. For example, this is a latency histogram per volume. Now let's go back to the overview. This is the grid view. It shows high level information per volume such as critical and major alerts. The list view shows also performance over time. Now let's focus on the data warehouse volume. This is an overtime report. I can select the time period from here. I can also turn on the latency and can pin on a graph to get the exact numbers. Here we have the weekly pattern widget. This is a very powerful graph. It displays the workload in a hourly basis. We can see that this application was doing pretty much the same in the past week. There was a peak on Wednesday at 5 p.m. of about 22k IOPS. This area is colored in dark blue. The rest of the time it was doing about 13k IOPS. This area is in light blue. Now the system also flagged the events and configuration page so we can with one click get to the events page using this context. So now we can see the events happened on this volume during the past week. Also if we click on the configuration we have this volume selected for us. Now let's see if there are any other objects in the system that are related to the data warehouse application. At the top bar we have the global search. We can find any storage object by name. So indeed we have a new data, another data warehouse volume. We can open it in the configuration page or in the overview page. So let's open the overview page of this volume. Now we'd like to compare the other data warehouse volume to it. So I can select from the context selector directly. All the reports in the web UI are overtime reports. We have them in cluster level and in object level. For example, with one click I can get the block size histogram of the entire cluster. I can also click on a specific block size and it takes me to the latency histogram of this block size. I can also with one click get the SSD balance report. This report shows that the data is evenly distributed on all SSDs. The variance is about 150 megabytes. Now let's go to the hardware page and look on all other hardware components. On the left side it lists all the bricks available on this cluster. Clicking on a specific component shows additional information on the information pane on the right side. I can also open the DAE and look on all SSDs. Clicking on specific SSD shows all its details. 
Now I've been requested before to provision new volumes for Oracle database. But first, let's go to the dashboard and look at the capacity utilization of the array. Here we can see the physical capacity usage. It's about 22%. This graph shows the logical versus the physical capacity, also the breakdown of deduplication and compression. The current DRR is 3.421. This is the overall efficiency. It includes the thin provision savings and the copy efficiency. All of these give us an excellent amount of savings. Now let's do the provisioning. On the left side menu, we have the new button. From here, I can create the most popular objects in the system. So I'm going to create now four new volumes, one terabyte each. And I'm going to tag them with Oracle tag. Now I have four new volumes in the system. There is an incredible feature here that suggests me what to do next. So I can map this volume to an existing initiator group, a new one, or add them to a new consistency group. So I'm going to add them to a new consistency group for easy management. Let's call this consistency group Oracle CG. We're going to tag this with Oracle tag. Now the system suggests me to map these volumes, so I'm going to map them to an existing initiator group. This is the mapping window. On the left side, the CG that we just created is already selected. Now I just need to, to select the initiator group from the right side of the page. So I'm going to select the production IG. It automatically creates the land mappings. Just need to press apply and that's it. I have my environment up and running. Now we'd like to create a new repurposed copy from this consistency group. So this CG is already selected. Let's go to the repurpose menu, create repurpose copy, give it a name, and it's going to create four new volumes writable copies of this environment. Let's map these volumes to the test initiator group. I can change the land mapping if I would like. Press next and confirm and that's it. We have the test environment up and running. Now we have another consistency group, Production CG. It has a repurposed copy. Called QA. Now we would like to refresh the data that we have on the QA volumes from the production volumes. So I'm going to select refresh selected. Select the production consistency group. This image show the direction of the data that we are going to overwrite. I need to confirm this operation and apply. And now the QA environment has the most updated data from the production. Thank you for watching.